This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, 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 Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And today's a very important show for you. Not only if you're a real estate person or a gold person or anything, it's really about what something is worth. What is its real value, especially in today's economy when we can't measure value anyway? And what is inflation and what does inflation means? And I'm old enough to remember when inflation numbers were real, now they're fake. And so it's a really, really important time to listen to this program because the question is, what is something worth? And uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an indicator called CPI, Con- Consumer Price Index, and it's 100% manipulated. I mean, they, they just make it what they want it to say. And everybody goes, oh, but it's a very important number because inflation or what's called cost of living adjustments and all that are all based upon the CPI. So if the CPI goes up, then lots of things jump in price because you have to adjust for it. So they adjust it down. And so it's really a goofy, go- I've never seen a more confusing time in all my years in business here. So it's a very important program. Um, Kim is in South Carolina at our home yep. there. I just want to say, Robert, isn't, isn't everything manipulated these days? <laughs> what, I, what I'm excited about for this show is that, you know, we're always trying to figure out the truth behind something or what's real because everything's so fake. Um, so hopefully uh, I trust today is going to be a great value because we're going to look at what's real versus what's fake. And it's not only what's real or what's fake, is what can you say without getting taken down? <laughs> you know, I mean, I've never had, you know, are, are we back at Gestapo times? You know, <laughs> what is happening? So our guest today is uh, Jason Hartman, who's a friend of friends. We're all together at George Gammon's event in Miami, which was a fabulous event. I guess George is having another one in Houston or something now. And I was just listening to him and he's out there as usual. And uh, so it's a very important time to be paying attention, not that what we say are facts, but these are our points of view of what's going on in the economy today. So our guest today is Jason Hartman. He's the founder and CEO of the Hartman Media Company and the Hartman Foundation. And we're gonna be talking about HCI. So Jason, uh, give us a little bit of your background, but what does HCI mean? Sure. So uh, thanks, Robert. The HCI is a new index that I created to try and get a better handle on real estate values and to backtest them uh, through history and then to also uh, use the HCI, the Hartman Comparison Index, to project forward what might be coming down the pike. Because as, as you've said and Kim has said, we are in very strange times. Everything is manipulated nowadays everything is a scam. I think uh, people are catching on, you know, back in 2005, 2004, when I was giving uh, talks at conferences and, and then started podcasting about 2006, you know, you talk to people about the Federal Reserve, you talk to them about monetary policy, and very few people even were in tune with that, you know, uh, they but but now, you know, people are really getting it. And I think cryptocurrencies to some extent are responsible for that. People understand what fiat money is now by authority. You know, it's it's fake money. Uh, that's what we basically have with every currency on earth. It's, it's all by fiat, by authority. And so, um, you know, how do we value anything in a highly manipulated, highly censored environment? Big tech companies are censoring everybody. You can't speak the truth anymore. It's like George Orwell's book, 1984. It's, you know, it's a very discouraging time and very disconcerting in many ways. But one thing that has a lot of data in it, and uh, and this is why communism and socialism have been a disaster every time in history and every place on earth, is because they didn't have the data of accurate price signals. And price signals contain just a fortune, a wealth of data in them. So when, when any commodity in the market, whether it be a, a good or a service, has a price, and that price is determined by hopefully a free market, if not at least a relatively free market, 
if we use that price signal and all the data it has behind it, like why is the price of gold what it is? Why is the price of oil what it is? Why is the price of Bitcoin what it is? Why is the dollar valued compared to other currencies at whatever value it is? When we use all that data and we take maybe 40 of these products and services or commodities and services, and we combine them into an index and then compare that index to housing prices, we can learn a lot. And I think we can really mitigate any downside risk and possibly uh, have a lot of upside potential by using if, that data. If, if the numbers are accurate. You're right, absolutely. And, and you know, so Kim, Kim and I remember when, how did they measure the value of a rent? They, they basically said, if you were living in your house, what would you charge yourself rent for? Yeah. That's how they got the rental value. And then, you know, Kim and I, Kim, we bought our first house together. Kim had to go to our gold depository because we didn't <laughs> trust the dollar. Right, Kim? Yeah, we had, we had been stacking silver bars in our closet in our master bedroom in La Jolla, oh. California, when we were pretty broke. Yeah. Uh, we were buying our own, our personal residence up in Portland, Oregon. And they said, we, we need $23,000 now, quick. Right. Because our credit was so bad, it's like we had to jump on this. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I took the silver bars in, in grocery bags to the precious metals dealer down the street and got our $23,000. Yeah, you, you know, that that is a great story. See, if, if someone has been, if someone watching or listening has been saving to buy maybe their first rental property and say they've been doing that for 10 years, no one told them they had to save their money denominated in dollars. They could have saved that money, that wealth as they accumulated it. They get paid in dollars, but they could immediately convert them to gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, oil, orange juice, rice, anything, right? They could convert them to anything. And as they stored that wealth, the question is, if it took them five years or 10 years, what was it worth vis-a-vis -vis the dollar? You know, everything in life is Just, understood. Just Go ahead. Hang on, hang on, because you're getting a little too complex for the rich dad crowd here. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, simple. Now, I was um, watching the Suns game and there was a uh, realtor there with her husband and she had tax problems. And so and she was sitting with her accountant this guy should go to jail, I think, personally. But yeah. I, was, I was listening to the conversation. And uh, apparently, she, because the real estate market's been going up so fast, she's, she and her husband have been buying and flipping as well as selling, you know, as a broker. So they're getting commissions. So they were flipping properties and all this. But they never paid the taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, Kim, I'm sitting there. I'm at Tomaso's listening to this horror story, you know, I'm going, and I said, holy mackerel. So her solution was she was going to flip another property. Right. Yeah. And I said to her, the taxes. yep. Yeah. And I said, he's just making it worse. And yeah. she had no idea what I was talking about. She was going to short-term capital gains. Right. She was going to flip another property. And on top of that, I said, what if the market crashed? And she said, the words I've been waiting to hear. Oh, real estate prices always go up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so can you remember those words? <laughs> I do remember those words. And that's why, that's why Jason, I, I like this index that you're doing because everybody says, oh, the prices are through the roof and they're yeah. this and they're that and they're so inflated. And But you're saying maybe not because let's compare it to real goods and services and yeah. see exactly where they do stand, not just opinions. Everybody's on opinions today. Everybody I know. Very yeah. few facts out there. A lot, a lot of, of opinions it. with little data, right, Kim? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah couldn't agree more. And, well, and the data is accurate. That's my other bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's you a know, huge thing. Not, but understand how bad it is. If somebody is afraid you to give you true data because they might get deplatformed. Yeah. I mean, this whole yeah. thing, that's, that's like that woman, that realtor with her husband with a CPA going to flip her way out of a tax problem. <laughs> I'm going, you're kidding me. Yeah. 
you know, it's it's sort of like in in I think it was your book, Robert, who took my money, where you gave the the uh, comparison of the dairy farmer versus the cattle rancher, I believe, yeah. and uh, and and the flippers are the cattle ranchers, right? You know, uh, but but some at some point that game of musical chairs ends, and those prices don't go up, and the flipping doesn't always work, right? So, yeah, better. Better to be a cash flow how, how investor. Did into, how did you get into this, Jason? What's what's your background? Uh, into real estate in general. In uh, yeah, into everything you're doing these days. Yeah. And tell us um, what you're doing these days. You know, uh, I grew up poor. I lived in Los Angeles. Uh, I had a single mom. It was a struggle uh, for sure. And uh, I uh, saw an infomercial when I was 16 years old of a of a guru. This was before the Kiyosaki era. And uh, and uh, I I got his book and I read three chapters and put it down and my mom read the rest. And about two years later, she said, you know, I've been checking out these real estate seminars. There's one in Anaheim. Why don't you go? And so I went and, uh, and that really inspired me to get my real estate license to just kind of learn the basics in the business. And six months into my career, I was 20. I bought my first rental property from a client of mine. Yeah. So it's Who been a great ride. Who in those days? There was a lot of them. Oh, that was Robert Allen. Oh, yeah. 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 Down. Down. Crap. Wow. Back in the old days. Yeah. 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 We read that book. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, those were yeah, the photos. Can change your life. A book can change your life. Yeah, absolutely. It can. I mean, look at Rich Dad Poor Dad has changed millions and millions of lives. I mean, uh, you know, the first time I heard about Rich Dad Poor Dad was when I was in Australia. I was on a a, a trip for a couple of weeks in Australia, and um, uh, my my friend and I that were cruising around Australia met a couple, and he 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 mentioned Rich Dad Poor Dad. I'd never heard of it before, and this was in 1999, I think. So uh, explain the heart. And, uh, commodity index. So, so the comparison index is basically, uh, it's all about comparison. For example, you know, how do you know, uh, anything without comparison? You know, you, if you have a rich dad and a poor dad, you have an understanding of two schools of thought, right? Uh, and I think we do that with pretty much everything in life, Robert, we compare things and that's how we value things. And so if you compare the price of real estate to this basket of commodities and services, I think you can really determine a lot by it. So let's take gold, for example. Well, but you know, is that what the HCI does? Harbor and yeah, it, it compares. Yeah. So I'm going to help you. How does, how does somebody access it? Um, well, they're accessing it right now, <laughs> for example, and we've got a white paper on it that we're happy to share. And uh, you can get where that through my edit? website. Where they, yeah. where, where's your website? Where do they go? Uh, JasonHartman.com. Just my name. Yeah. And so they can, what happens when they go on there and they have a two bedroom, one bath and podunk? Can they compare that with gold? What, what is the comparison? Yeah. Well, the comparison is like this in the index. So if you go back to say 1970, when we were still on the gold standard before Nixon took us off, uh, the median price house was $22,000 and change. And back then gold was 35 bucks. So if you wanted to buy the median price house in gold, it would take 646 ounces of gold. Today, the median house price is about 348,000, you know, give or take, depending on what index you're listening to. Uh, gold is about almost $1,800. So today to buy that house, it would only take 194 ounces of gold. What, 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 was, a, what was a 1970 comparison? 646. So today it's less than a third. It's cheaper priced in gold. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Yeah. That is really cool. Hey, uh, we're yeah. gonna uh, go, to, go to break right now. But I want everybody to stay tuned because it's really important today we have some kind of basis or I call a benchmark as to what something's worth. So we'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Uh, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them so that you can listen to this program again because being in the business of education. We don't sell anything. We don't, we make no recommendations. We don't say buy this, do that. We're not financial planners. But the reason we want you to go to back to richdadradio.com, if you listen to this program one more time, you'll pick up twice as much. But not only that, if you sit to have your friends, family and business associate listen to it, and then you discuss it, you'll find your capacity to learn explodes. So today our guest is Jason Hartman. 
He's a founder and CEO of Hartman Media, and he and Kenny and George Gammon have started some kind of fund. I have no idea what you guys, you guys are always creating things out there. But it's exciting because he, he has uh, created the Hartman Commodity Index, and it's a compare what makes sense to everything else. Hartman comparison. Oh, comparison. I like, I got commodities on my mind. (laughs) You're comparing to commodities, but one more time. uh, Sarah, our producer here, what what question do you want from Jason? So we left off um, at the first segment and we just learned that, you know, the average price of a home is 348,000 and that would only take 194 ounces of gold compared to in 1970. 70. uh, You know, it was much higher, 600 something ounces. So I would like to know, um, what does that mean to the average consumer? Why, why do I want care about that? Then, Kim, anyway. what do you think about this? I mean, why, why is this important to you? Because, you know, as an investor, why do you want to know the comparisons of things? So I, I want to know what's for, well, so for example, I think you kind of said it, Jason, is most people think you have to hold cash. You have to buy properties in cash. Um, but there's other places you could put your money where the value of that money could increase dramatically. And then your, your worth is more so. Um, right prices come down, actually, if you can do that. Yeah, it's absolutely. And it's interesting you say that, Jason, because I was at the uh, sushi bar at AJ's uh, market, and I was talking to one of the girls, those two, these two girls, they're, es- they're escapees or people from Myanmar. They ran away from there. And, and they're, you know, the immigrants are busting their butts. I said, how many days a week do you work? She says, seven days a week. And so I said, why? She says, because I'm going to buy a house. Yeah. And all I wanted to say is, oh, God, it's kind of on the top of the market. But I didn't, I didn't want to dampen the dream. Oh, a dream. A dream. But just working. She not, you know how immigrants, like when the Vietnamese came, they never stopped working. They work hard. Yeah. Yeah. And they saved up and they bought real estate or yeah. gold. So anyway, that's why your um, your. The Hartman Comparison Index is a crucial thing for, I should take it to that sushi girl. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. And, and you know, Robert and Kim, it depends where, right? You know, there are three basic types of markets in the United States or around the world, linear markets, cyclical markets, and hybrid markets. And they do act differently. The high-flying markets along the west coast and the expensive northeast and where i am in south florida those markets are getting pretty frothy for sure but the good linear markets in the midwest and the southeast that aren't that expensive um i would argue that they're still pretty cheap priced in a lot of things when compared to a lot of things so you know you you were asking what does this mean to people what do i do with this information and we only took one commodity so far just gold but it, it means two things One is that it it tells you, you know, it informs you of how you might want to save your money or store your wealth. Do you want to store it in dollars that are constantly being debased by the government and the Federal Reserve because they're just printing more? I mean, there's two things that value everything on earth, scarcity and utility. If something is scarce, it's going to have more value. And if something is useful, it's going to have more value. Taxes and political influence. Right. Yeah. Well, yes, those (laughs) absolutely. Absolutely. No question. And so, uh, you know, gold is scarce and it does have value in the sense that it's been considered money for 5,000 years. So if you stored your, your wealth in gold rather than dollars, you would have been better off during this time because the pricing power or the purchasing power of the dollar has declined dramatically and gold hasn't. Okay, so so it's cheaper to buy a house in gold today, but more expensive to buy it in dollars, right? So that informs that question. How should you store your wealth? The other question it informs is what's next for the market? Is the market too expensive? Well, if you if you only think of things in dollars, then yeah, you're going to say, hey, it looks pretty expensive. But if you think of things compared to a whole variety of other commodities, you might say it's cheap. It, it depends on the commodity you're comparing to. But it also depends upon the mass migrations right now. I've never seen, yeah. this, these are like the wildebeest going across Africa right now. Yeah. So, so Kim, when, when we, we just invested in oil, so mm-hmm. um, why do we invest in oil? Well, one of the reasons is, well, what, several reasons, but of course, tax, tax consequences are great. 
taxes yeah, are great. We save and money by not paying taxes. And also, we're we're kind of on the inside of these these deals. We're not we're not buying oil shares, and we we know the operators. So I feel I feel more um, solid that way. But I wanted to ask Jason. You know, you talk about, and we've talked about gold and silver, and and we'll comp- I want to compare it to oil also. But why is it people are so hesitant? to part with their dollars, <laughs> like want to hoard their dollars. Why, did, why are they uh, doing that? Kim, that's a great question. And I would argue that they're just brainwashed. <laughs> you know, dollars, I mean, what real use does a dollar have? Think about it. It's a, it's a piece of, well, not exactly paper, but it's like cotton fibers or whatever it is. And with, you know, pictures of dead presidents and the value of it is constantly being debased. Uh, you know, I think Robert has these too. I think he was holding these up, if I recall correctly. One of my podcast listeners sent me Zimbabwe dollars, right? This is a hundred trillion Zimbabwe dollars right here. But what's the value of it? It's just a little collectible. It has no value, right? And so the name of something is not the same as the value of something. Yeah. And and so dollars, so, we so only care what they advise so, us. You know? so how does a Hartman comparison index work? I mean, how do you gather your information? Because everything's in flux. Wait, 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 one, one last before we go into that. How does oil compare yeah, to gold? And- oil. Yeah, oh, oil's an interesting one, uh, Robert, because I, I would argue that oil Especially is- so much, the oil prices. It does, no question. But if you look at it over a long period of time, those fluctuations start to even out, okay? And then it becomes more accurate. And this is why you can't just compare it to one commodity, right? Everybody just compares housing prices to dollars. That's all they do. Why not compare it to a whole bunch of things that every human needs? And oil runs the world. It's the most important commodity on earth. Uh, So in 1970, oil was only $3 a barrel, if you can believe that, (laughs) $3 a barrel. And if you wanted to buy the median price house back in 1970, it was $22,600. You would take, you would need to bring the seller 6,746 barrels of oil, (laughs) a lot of oil, right? And today you still need to bring them a lot of oil. The median house price now, as of June, is 348,000 and oil was $75 a barrel at the time. So today you only need to bring that seller 4,622 barrels of oil. So priced in oil, houses are cheaper, priced in gold houses are cheaper than they were 51 years ago. That's amazing. I know, but the reason I always kick in there is because, you know, we have the, the cash flow quadrant ESB and the I. Yeah, and it's inside. I love that. We are, our oil, we don't pay tax on the oil. Right. So that, 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 I mean, it cuts down I mean, oil is the most efficient thing that we can use to make money. And so last, last week, just last week, we bought another share of an oil well. Mm-hmm. And not because we like the price of oil, but because we don't have to pay tax. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Awesome. And, when, and that's really what Rich Dad stands for, is we keep it as simple as possible. So your, your uh, Hartman comparison index is interesting. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole other degree you can take beyond that. It's like I give Gammon a whole bunch of... George Allegrief and Peter Schiff and Mike Maloney said, why are you guys living in Puerto Rico? Yeah. Oh, yuck. Yeah. <laughs> right. A lot of my friends have moved there and including Mark Moss, of course, that we uh, both are friends with. Why? Yeah. Well, you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay tax anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. If yeah. You want to educate and enlighten people on tax. Yeah. Are, 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 Robert, I'm curious, are you doing oh, wait, oil uh, and gas exploration? Uh, or hang on. Just- uh, this is not, we're not an education program here. Okay. So Kim, explain how that works with us. How what works? The oil and gas stuff. So the oil and gas we get, we get is the, you know, the um, tax code, as Tom Wilwright says, it's a, it's a book of incentives. And right. so because the government doesn't want to go into oil production, we get incentives if we fund oil production. So, so we if, get major tax write-offs as a result. So what we do is, that, let's say we put a million dollars into oil exploration, we got 400,000 back. Wow, yeah, incredible. You think about that. So that's, so that's what Rich Dad, Rich Dad is more on the B and the I side than the E and the S side. But, and our job was to make it simple as possible. 
So your your index is really good, but I and the, and the sad thing about it is like I was talking about that real estate broker who's flipping houses. Now she has a tax problem, so she's going to flip some more. And then the the two refugees from Myanmar, they're going to work seven days a week and they're saving cash. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. You know, so I wish people were listening to this. Any comments yeah, on that, Jim? Yeah, and, and to the point on the, on the oil and, and taxes, um, we still have to do a lot of searching to find a good oil deal. We're never right. going to just do a deal for the tax incentives alone. It's got to that oil deal has to make sense and make financial sense and be a nice cash flow to our, our bottom line. But what I like, Jason, too, about your, your comparison index, the Hartman comparison index, I think more importantly, what you're teaching people is where do you store your money? Yeah. Where do you store your wealth? Where do you store that your, your, your value of what you have? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's crucial. And because everybody is trained to, to hold dollars and pesos and yuan and all of yeah. that. Um, but this is, I think that's probably the most valuable lesson of all. It, it, it's true because if you would have stored it in oil or gold, you would have been much better off than dollars. Correct. Yeah. And taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And tax wise, that's another big benefit, of course. Yeah. And, and political incentives. That's why those guys like Gammon down in Puerto Rico, because right. of politics, I say, you don't have to pay tax here. So I'll wait on pay tax here anyway. Yeah. But anyway, the, the thing I like about what you're doing, Jason, is getting people to think. Yeah. You know, that is the most important thing you can do today is think, compare, look at different, you know, how you do this, how do people do that? But most people, I, I guess, when we're at, when we're in Miami together, you know, the, with uh, George Gam and this girl comes up to me, she says, should I buy real estate? Uh-huh. And I lost it. I've been here, I've been in this business too long, Jason. I said, Holy mackerel. I mean, you know, they, they have this teacher, please, please tell me what to do. Right. Yeah. You know? Instead of think it through yourself, you mean, right? That's the lesson. Who said thing is the hardest work there is. Yeah. That's why so few people engage in it. Yeah. That's uh, Earl Nightingale, I think, <laughs> was right. used to say that. Yeah. So, I'm, 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 what, I'm, what I'm glad is you're getting people to think, Yeah. not give them answers. It's a very right. big difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Jim, and then another you. question I have is because um, we didn't talk about inflation or deflation, but inflation and deflation is only measured in a currency, right? In a fiat, right. it's not measured in real value of goods and services. Yeah, yep, I, I agree. Uh, but but it is measured in the sense that we lose purchasing power of those goods and services, which is sad. That's how they're impoverishing the population and concentrating wealth among the super rich. Uh, through debasing the the dollars because uh, poor people and people that don't listen to your show and don't read the rich dad books, they don't understand how to store their, their wealth, how to store their hard earned labor, which is really what you're doing. You're trading your labor. I mean, if you're at the, if you're at the, you know, E part of the quadrant, right? Um, You're trading your labor for dollars, which is not the best way, but that's what most people do. And then they, they, get taxed at the highest rate and then they store it in dollars and the the fed and the government is stealing out from under it's a inflation is a pickpocket it's a thief well, you know a, it's not what buffett said is one of the greatest punishments there is is inflation yeah inflation is very simply it's volume times velocity so mm-hmm. they're printing as much money as possible and they're speeding up the spending of it so, right. that's, so, that, so that's why John Williams of Shadow Stats was saying it's all at 15%. So that means mom and pop or the, the girl working, cutting up, you know, sushi, whatever she's doing. He's falling behind at such high rate of speed. It's terrible. Yeah. So let me ask again, Robert, you said it's so it, inflation is me- measured in volume and velocity. So the more money is being printed and then they're spending it like crazy with yes. all the stimulus programs and everything. So that that's like a perfect storm for inflation. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And, and that's what George Gammon's last thing was on the uh, repo and reverse repo markets and all this is very simply saying is that because the thing was deflating, they had to inflate the volume and inject it directly via stimulus straight to the market. Generally they had to go through the banks to borrow money. So Kim and I had our advantage because we could borrow money, Right. but people couldn't borrow money anymore. So they printed trillions and they inject it via STEMI checks 
and then the Robin Hood and Bitcoin, I mean, and Bitcoin yeah. takes off and all this stuff goes crazy. So the reason, you know, Jason, I was really happy to have you come on because the Hartman Commodity Index is we're in a mania right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, this we is, are. We've never been here in all the history of the United States. We have never been here before. Yep. And so what your index is doing is giving people just some comparisons so you can f- figure out what's going up and what's coming down. Understand where you are. Yeah, we are in a mania and people in manias, Robert, they just lose their head. They just get so, they're so afraid of loss. That fear of loss yep. drives them FOMO. to make bad decisions. FOMO and greed, fear of missing out and greed. You know, the yep. thing that was funny was that there was a tulip of mania. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's one of the funniest things I ever read was that there were <laughs> tulip bulbs are going through the roof, you know? Yeah. And the funniest story I ever read was, this one person comes in from overseas and he didn't know it was a tulip bulb and ate it. <laughs> I wonder how, wonder how that turned out. <laughs> well, Jason, in, in terms of your index and all, and what you, because you, you study a lot and you, you do a lot of research, what do you see coming down the pike? What's your crystal ball say? Uh, you know, Kim, uh, the crystal ball is a tough one, but I would say that I think we've got a ways to go on the real estate market. I think it's it's cooling a bit. Uh, people are taking a little bit of a breather right now, I think. Uh, that's just a very new thing, so it's hard to say that if that'll continue. Uh, but um, I, I think overall, the real estate prices are going to hold up for another year or two uh, pretty well. Uh, the stock market, I don't know, you know, uh, and the economy itself is built on a house of cards. The whole thing is largely fake. Uh, but the question is, uh, will it crash someday? Of course it will. Uh, but how long can they kick the can down the road when you're the, when you got the biggest military on earth and you're the biggest country, the biggest economy, and, um, you know, you can kick that can down the road a long time when you, when you've got that reserve currency status. Uh, there's a lot of games that the U S can benefit from, uh, that they play. So. So Jason, I just listened to my friend, Jim records. Mm-hmm. This is like just waiting for that last snowflake. Right. Yeah. And then, <laughs> that last, <laughs> that's the last snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> that last oh, little last bit. Snowflake. Yeah. And we don't know. It, it could be with that ne- next piece of sushi that girl will cut. <laughs> yeah. Could be. <laughs> but anyway, you know, thank you for doing what you do. Uh, how do people access your Hartman Com- uh, comparison index? Uh, they can just go to my website, jasonhartman.com. And I've also got a little free mini book for your listeners. I did a bunch of stuff with Ken McElroy on pandemic investing. And, uh, and so that's available at pandemicinvesting.com. Just some of these principles as they apply to this crazy world that they've, you know, spiraled the entire planet into uh, with, and that's maybe a whole nother discussion, but uh, there's, there's just a free little book at pandemicinvesting.com as well. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jason. Uh, when we come back, we'll be coming with the last word. So Jason, thank you very much. And Kim and I will stay on for the final word with Sarah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Jason. Bye. Take Bye. care. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. The special thanks to uh, Jason Hartman and his Hartman Media Group, and the, his Hart, jasonhartman.com, but most importantly, his Hartman Comparison Index, because it really forces you to think outside the box from just money and all this thing, because you know, that's all Kim and I do, is we're always comparing what's going up, what's coming down, and things like this. And generally, the dollar's been going down, as far as I'm concerned. Any comments on that, Kim? Yeah, I, I thought this was really interesting because, you know, I, I met Jason and he talked about his index before, but I never realized um, how valuable it is in terms of the value of where you're storing your money. Where do you store your money where it gets the most value? And uh, yeah, you and I have been, in sto- have been storing it in silver since we first met and gold and, and oil. oil and real estate and everything that I can touch, we can touch and feel that is yeah, we- real. Is this the star? I thought we got our pretty face yeah, on. The program, yeah, you need to give her a face because people actually recognize you by voice. It's yeah. funny yeah. at an event and they're like, I know that voice. You're on the radio show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So now you get to see my lovely face. That's you right. Go. <laughs> and she's the best, man. I don't know where we find you, but you're the best. Anyway, it keeps the ball moving. And we got to get um, Tom Wheel right on to explain taxes. Mm-hmm. Especially to all those yo-yos living in Puerto Rico. <laughs> 
So, so Sarah, what did, what did you take away from uh, Jason's interview today? So I think like you, the biggest takeaway was, so what, right? So who cares if I compare, you know, the price of houses to gold, but I think the important thing for me was, well, how are you storing your wealth? Because as the dollar's losing value, these other commodities that you can compare it to, um, you know, you can see the, the value of your dollar going down, but these commodities are holding still or even rising in value. Yeah. And the most important thing is just pay attention because it's changing so, so fast. For instance, George Gammon, you know, he had this incredible podcast upon the repo market and reverse repo. And if you don't understand that, you go, oh my God. You know, basically what's happening is people can't go to the banks anymore, commercial banks. So the Fed and the Treasury have to inject money directly into the economy, directly. Those are those stimmy checks, which sends the stock market into a bubble, which means you don't know exactly as Jason said, what's price discovery? What's it really worth? Where's that money coming from? So the reason, you know, the Hartman uh, comparison index is so important today is because we don't know what anything's worth anymore. So it's like you're just watching kind of these bobbing balls going up and down on the ocean. And I, I feel for those young late women from Myanmar who escaped Myanmar to be working at a sushi bar, working seven days a week, saving cash to buy a house. I'm going, uh, and she says, what do you think? I said, I didn't want to say anything because... I don't know what to think. And then the real estate agent who's been making money on commissions and flipping houses and not paying taxes. So her solution is she's going to flip more houses. I'm going, my God, this is nuts. This is like tulip a mania where the guy ate the tulip. <laughs> so I have a question because we, we've talked briefly in in our trip to Miami about the CPI, the, the consumer price index. Why is that? Why is that not a good index or indicator of what's happening? The numbers are fake. They keep changing what's in it, number one, and then they, the pricing and all is not quite accurate. Now, one thing about the CPI, the Consumer Price Index that I learned recently is the government wants that number to be low because they have a lot of debt to pay back. And if that number is low, it's cheaper for them to pay back their debt if they ever pay it back, really. But but it, it is cheaper for government if that index is low. So if they can manipulate it to keep the CPI, the consumer price index low, it benefits government. Well, it's not only that, is that if they raise the CPI, Kim and I make more money because a lot of our properties are indexed to inflation. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people have properties indexed to inflation and the CPI, yep. So right now, if the, if the national debt is 30 trillion and it goes to 5%, how much is that? 1.5 trillion in interest payments alone. It blows out wow. the whole gross domestic product. And yeah. I, I think I heard this morning that inflation, they're expecting to hit 7% in the next year. No, it's a sure. uh, guy, John, John Williams of Shadow Stats. He's, he's great because his, I love his stats, shadowstats.com. He says it's 15% wow. right now. Wow. But he, he uses the measures before Nixon took us off the gold standard. Yeah. So as long as the dollar was on the gold standard, there wasn't much, not that there wasn't much inflation, but there was, it was production. It was a true market. Mm -hmm. But what happens after they took the gold off the gold standard, this is in the 71, I remember going to my favorite Chinese restaurant in Hawaii and the menu would be whited out every day because the price of chow fun or chow mein was going up every day and it went out of control. And that's when this guy Volcker came in and just crushed it went to 25% interest rates or something like that. And that crushed the real estate market. And so Kim and I made a fortune because, because they, crushed the, they crushed the real estate market, prices crash, interest rates were high. And Kim and I would go and negotiate directly with the seller. We bypassed everybody. Wow. And there were these things called, um, what were they called? What, no. Uh, the the R RTC. No Oh, oh, no qualifying, yeah. Unqualifying loans. And so we would look for these loans at 8% when interest rates were at 20%. So we'd find a guy with a house with an 8% loan on it. And that's how we made our money. We just bought all these houses with 8% loans. We had no money, but they were so desperate to get out. They were happy. We said, yeah, we'll take over your loan for you because we could rent it for more than the price of the loan. And that's so always an opportunity. Oops, sorry. 
And, and that's to your point, Robert, people have to start thinking. <laughs> they have to yeah. stop thinking. There's other ways to do it than just go to a traditional bank and get a traditional loan. There's a lot of ways to, to very creative ways to finance things these days. Yeah. One last question though, because we're seeing the forbearance, um, you know, that program's gonna end July 31st, I think. That's well, a bit we, hope so. we hope so. So could that same scenario happen where these people might have had, you know, a five or 6% loan, they can't catch up on their payments. So they're going to find people who will buy it. You know, is that a potential? Yeah, yeah, there definitely. There's a big potential for a lot of properties to come on the market once the forbearance is lifted. Absolutely. So, so Kim, you know, uh, you know, Tim Tanner, our friend, Yeah. we bought our pace and house from, he called me, he says, there's a huge uh, Boy Scout camp for sale up Ooh. there. <laughs> And I said, I'm out. He goes, why? I said, because I don't know. This is the top of a market. Yeah. You know, I don't go into the tops. And I see, he said, I said, what else you got? He says, I have this guy who can build a house for half price because of a new construction system. So I'm, I'm meeting with him, uh, Spencer and I meeting with him on Friday because new technology is going to bring the advances. So we're not, we're not doom and gloomers. We're just saying, be aware of what's yeah. happening and as there's changes and people are hemorrhaging all over the place, it's always a good time to get rich too. So that's why what Jason was talking about, these comparison index and all that, it's a matter of just being aware. Yep, good. Any final comments or sir? No, another great show. And I'm glad we had this extra time at the end to really discuss the opportunity because like you said, there's always an opportunity. Holy it's geez. just being aware um, of what those are. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy a Boy Scout camp, you know, because what would I do with it at the top of a market? But if somebody has a technology can do more for less, I'm interested. Unless if that Boy Scout camp is going into foreclosure or something else and they have a desperate seller, then there might be an opportunity. So you never know. You never know. <laughs> so again, thank you to Jason Hartman, jasonhartman.com. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Robert. And, and thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show.